Today on Nerd Out, Drippy Pools. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano. We break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about Drippy Pools, the current network congestion state, and what can be done about it. Uh, this is going to be a little longer, so buckle up and strap in. So, Drippy Pools, current state of the network. So right now we have mempools on all the nodes set to a default value around 160 kilobytes, which is double the block size. Current block size is 80 kilobytes. And it's important to note that this block size is only one of the three sizes for a block. So now that we have smart contracts, a block can be out of physical block size, you know, space on the block. Uh, but as Carl from IOG says, it can be also out of smart contract memory units or smart contract steps. So sometimes if you see a block that's like loaded with smart contracts, it won't fill up that full 80 kilobytes because it ran out of memory or steps first. That's important to, to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing we've noticed is that small transactions tend to propagate faster than large transactions. So as you see from this illustration by Valentin on the Drip Drops team, the limited mempool size, which is if you look at this door here, sometimes the, the mempool has space available and this door will rise enough to fit some big transactions through, but most of the time it's the little ones that are getting through most often. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, also, on the current state of the network, most interactions happening on the blockchain require not one but two transactions. There's a remittance step and a settlement, and this represents like you buy the NFT, you receive the NFT, you request the swap, and then the swap settles. Um, so there's, there's these two events on the blockchain, and because we're congested, there's going to be waiting at some point. You can either wait before your remittance goes onto the chain. You can wait between the remittance and the settlement. Um, and so when we're looking at a user experience, from the user perspective, they're probably more okay waiting for their first transaction to get it on the chain than they are waiting for the thing to be received after they've completed their transaction or their side of the transaction. So what we're going to look at with Drippy Pools is seeing if we can't find a way to shorten that time between remittance and settlement. You know, we want that, that time period to shrink as much as possible. Uh, the, the chart over here on the right, this is kind of an example of what we're seeing on Drip Drops. So at the beginning of the epoch, we see a huge influx of transactions. Obviously, you look at the, the mempool size over here on the left. And we're going way over the, the default values of 160 kilobytes. And because those transactions have trouble propagating, they tend to just kind of back up until eventually the network reaches a point where things slow down. And then we can slowly, slowly, slowly get some stuff onto, onto the chain. And so what we're trying to do is, is maybe give a better user experience here. And some of these learnings and experiments can also help out other, other projects um, you know, that are doing swaps or, you know, whatever the project is doing. Uh, so often people say, oh, no, Cardano is fair. It's a first-in, first-out system. And that's partially true. So within a given node's mempool, yes, it is first-in, first-out. Whatever transaction is received in first is the first one that gets passed on to the next node, is the first one that gets into a block producer, is the first one that goes on the chain. However, the node doesn't always let transactions into the queue because of that, that door that opens and closes. Sometimes that door is so low that the big transactions get, sorry, you'll have to wait, I can't deal with you now. Oh, and it goes to the next one and maybe that one gets let in. So if everybody ran a huge mempool, like the door was always super high, then we would see a completely, or very close to an egalitarian system where anytime the node, you know, says, hey, do you have any transactions for me? And it would say, yes, here's some transactions. Okay, I'll add that to my mempool. So if it, if the node never said no, then 
then we would be very close to egalitarian. So given current resource limits, this isn't really feasible for everybody to run one gigabyte mempools, which is why IEG set the limits at the current defaults, which is double a block size. So on drip drops, this is an illustration um, by Valentin that, that kind of explains what we're dealing with. So it's, it's like a restaurant that is very good at taking orders. So we can take orders extremely fast. There's, there's no limitations on how fast we can take the order and we can package those orders together, bundle them together, put them into our own relays and mempools very fast. But then the delivery mechanism, getting them back to the customers is kind of, that's the choke point for us right now. <clears throat> and that's what we'd kind of like to, to get resolved. So let's dive a little bit deeper, another layer, let's visualize it this way. So let's say there's a block producer out there, maybe you're a pool operator, you're running this block producer. And it has its mempool filled with all different kinds of transactions, some large, some small, some medium sized, and maybe you just made a block. And so there's some empty space down here. And so what the block producer says is it goes out to all of its relays that, it, that it's pointed to or that point to it and it says, hey, Relay, do you have a transaction for me to add to my mempool? And so maybe this Relay says, yeah, I've got this, this transaction at the top of my mempool. Here's, here's its size. And the block producer says, no, I'm sorry, I don't have enough space for that large one. So it'll skip it. Then it goes to the next Relay and says, oh, do you have one? Yeah, here's this medium-sized one. Oh, that one will fit. I'll add it. Then it goes to the next Relay. Oh, I've got a small one here. Yeah, I'll add that. And then it comes back, you know, large, of course, still doesn't fit until, you know, eventually the large one will fit once, you know, a block is made or a block is made that clears out enough of these transactions uh, where, you know, the large ones will fit. But by and large, large transactions, as you can see, have trouble propagating even into a block producer. And then this is compounded depending on how many hops are between like let's say this is the, the drip drops relays over here where it's all large transactions. And so every hop between this relay and the next block producer, it is going to struggle passing those large transactions through because of how the mempools work. So you kind of get an idea of, of the problem we're dealing with right now. Um, another issue that we're dealing with on mainnet, this isn't specific to drip drops or anything like that is in general block propagation is slow and we see that now because more and more transactions are running smart contracts and the way propagation works today is a block is received by a node relay block producer doesn't matter it's received then it's all validated if that block is valid, it's placed at the tip of that node's blockchain, and only then is it sent on to other, other relays. So it's very important now, you can't just run weak little relays and not be hurting block propagation. So in today's Cardano, it's important to upgrade your relays, make them more powerful. You shouldn't be running some something with, you know, tiny vCPU. A lot of people think, oh yeah, my block producer, it's big and beefy, but, and then they run little relays that don't do anything. Uh, but they are important because they also have to validate all these blocks. And if they validate slowly, that's going to slow the block propagation across the whole network. So think about that. Upgrade your relays if you can and hopefully we'll see fewer forks and, and fewer lost blocks if you guys do that. So what are some Basho improvements coming? We talked a little bit about this last time. We are getting a slow and steady increase in block size. We went from 72 to 80 uh, since the last time I made a video a few weeks ago. Uh, we're also seeing slow and steady increase in smart contract steps and memory. They'll be rolling those out. We, we just had I think a, a memory upgrade recently. So that means more block or more transactions containing smart contracts can fit into one particular block. Uh, we're also going to be getting block pipelining. So this is, this is an upcoming feature. I believe it requires a hard fork, um, but this will be where blocks aren't validated before they're sent on. So 
today they're validated before being sent on and so it's very important to have those relays be beefier to get those validated quickly and sent on quickly um, then we'll also be getting smart contract pointers uh, right now today when you create a smart contract transaction the whole smart contract is packaged in that transaction and so when you have smart contract pointers you can just have a pointer and maybe a hash to where that smart contract lives from the first time it was put on the chain. And so that can greatly reduce the size of those smart contract transactions and then we can pack more of them in a block and then maybe we'll bump up against different limits instead of the block size limit. Maybe we'll bump up the steps and memory limits. Then everybody can upgrade their CPUs on block producers and then IOG can then bump those, those values. So. We, we are kind of in a state where you need to really be thinking about the performance of, uh, of your hardware at this point. So really be, really be evaluating. It's, it's been you know a very long time since we launched the Mary era. We're not doing simple Alice to Bob transactions anymore. Get, get your hardware upgraded so the network can run smoothly. And so where we want to go with drip drops is to set up a system where we have a better delivery mechanism that can happen more in parallel instead of hitting these mempool roadblocks every time. And in order to do that, we need the help of other stake pool operators. And so what drip drops is looking to do is something more of this kind of topology <clears throat> with drippy pools. So with this setup, you would either take one of your existing relays or you would spin up a new relay and you would point it at your block producer. The block producer does not need to point back at the, the drippy pools relay. And then you would open a firewall port so that the only person talking into this relay would be one of the uh, drip drops relays so that this relay would would fill up with just the large transactions and this is a little more fair because now the block producers can actually see some of these large trans transactions now it'll still be fair it'll still mix in all of these other regular transactions coming in from the network this just allows um, some of these really old clunky transactions to, to traverse the network a little better so we're just kind of tweaking topology. We're not asking you to run anything special here as far as mempool sizes. This can run at the default mempool size. Uh, the drip drops relays, they run at like one megabyte. So you could run this up to one megabyte, but that's not something we're, we're gonna be asking drippy pools to do. They can do it if they want, but they don't, they don't have to. And so these big clunky transactions will have a better chance of getting into the block producer and then when the block producer does make a, a block, at least some of them will get into the blocks. So why is Drip Drops doing this? Is it fair? Who can help? So the reason we're doing this, this is we feel like the Cardano user experience should be better. As I said earlier, we want to sh shrink that time between remittance and settlement of your Drip Drops transaction so that there's a better user experience there. And if we can shrink that time then the users aren't waiting for stuff and we also know we've got a big drop coming up with sunday swap it's unprecedented in its size or really for any size of any drop ever done on cardano we're looking at between 300 and 400 thousand potential users uh coming in to drip drops to get their their sunday tokens um, I think the largest drop to date before has been, you know, in the range of 40,000 transactions in a given epoch. Um, you know, that's that's about 30,000 to 40,000 is, is about what Drip Drops does in an epoch. I know Mill did a drop. I think theirs was around 40,000. Uh, Sunday Swap is going to going to dwarf that in size as far as how many individual users are um, allowed to get the the Sunday tokens. Um, the other reason it's fair is these old big transactions that are kind of pushed to the side, they deserve to be on chain. So it's it's fair to show these to your block producers. You're not doing anything. You're not skipping the line. Um, regular transactions will still get in. We're just giving these clunky transactions that are older a shot. 
So here's an example of a transaction that happened a few days ago on drip drops. Uh, it, it got into a block exactly five hours after it first went into a mempool. And so that's, that's a very poor user experience right now where the user puts in their drip drops order and they don't get it for five hours later. And we've seen, you know, this is kind of one example on other epochs where we had a bigger backlog. Um, you know, we've seen where it's 24 hours, 48 hours. It, it gets ridiculous. And I know other protocols, you know, where you do swaps and things like that, sometimes they have, you know, 48 hour, hour backlogs, which is, is not a very good user experience. And that's really what we're going for is Cardano is a blockchain that is for users. And if we don't put the focus on the users and adjust topologies for them to have good experiences, they will go to other chains where they can have a good experience. So that's what we're trying to do is, is focus on the user, give them a good user experience. So how can you help out? You can become a drip dropperators for a drippy pool. I will try to put a link down below where there's a form you can fill out. We're gonna start onboarding some drip dropperators. And all that means is you're going to configure a relay, kind of like we said, set up the firewall and we will point at your relay. And you, then you just point that relay at the block producer. And um, you know we'll have instructions on how to do that. We will be starting with single pool operators because single pools have kind of gotten gotten the shaft lately with some of these ISOs and stuff like that. So we're going to start with you guys. And for being onboarded, you will get a couple things. One is 10% extra drip tokens when when you delegates to your pool drip through drip drops. So your delegates will get an extra 10% of the drip token when they run at drip drops. And then we'll also be, there's a lot of users that come to drip drops on an epoch by epoch basis and we're going to give you guys some advertising banner space on that website so that'll be a, a rotating banner for some of your your pools and then they'll know that hey this is a drippy pool uh, we also might integrate some some gamification to this uh, we might show you know kind of a a drippy pool leaderboard something like that that's something we're looking at i don't know if that'll get implemented super quickly but then you can go there and kind of see how your pool is doing did you make any any drippy blocks that had, you know, at least one drip drops transaction in it. That's all I've got for today. So nerd out.